Hi, this is Sunil Bharti and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Mike Hogan, CEO of Carbonities Incorporate. Mike, first of all, welcome to the show. Uh, tell us a bit about the name of the company. What is the story behind the name? Because that will lead us into what the company is all about. This concept for this company uh, originally came from the fact that we were doing some development in containers and my uh, brother was working at Carbon Black and they were having difficulty with the uh, addre with addressing container security, and so it kind of became the the combination of carbon black and Kubernetes, and and that's how we ended up with that uh, uh, with that name. If you look at the the security in general. It's often seen as an afterthought by developer. Nobody, no, no developer starts <laughs> building an app or no company start building their services or application with security in mind. It's always an afterthought. But in the cloud native world, things are changing. Security is becoming uh, not only a, one of the serious concerns, but you know, if you look at DevSecOps and they're like you mentioned, Carbon Black, VMware is acquiring a lot of security focused companies. Other companies are also kind of improving their security uh, strategies. So my first question to you is that uh, uh, talk a bit about the cha this, this changing you know, mindset uh, 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 about security in the cloud native world. What is going on there? Why do we see this change? Security um, has been very much sort of a, an afterthought. They've been two distinct groups. And uh, so as we've run into more and more problems, um, you know, where people are seeing, you know, when you put it into a cloud native environment, you've got that that east-west um, problem of if you've got vulnerabilities or secrets or anything in there, it's a real problem. And people are starting to recognize that and saying, okay, maybe it's not such a good idea to just allow people to push microservices willy-nilly. We really do need that, that security uh, kind of oversight. And I think that's that recognition um, has really come, come to surface. And now we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, container-centric malware with, uh, for example, uh, mining of Monero and things like that. So, so I think it's just rising to the surface as we see more and more actual deployment into Kubernetes. Today, most of technologies are either leveraging or you know, you um, contributing uh, open source technologies. You know, you can. There's so much code to be written that one company cannot write that. So let's start about your, your the technologies that you are developing there. How much of it is open source? How much uh, of it is proprietary? And uh, and is it uh, SaaS or is it something that people download, you know, uh, install on their uh, data centers or uh, cloud? So we have a uh, collection of tools that we provide. So <clears throat> those include. Um, the SCA tool, and uh, that is leveraging some open source tools. Um, we also have the license analyzer. It, we, we assembled a lot of open source tools um, and then kind of extended them and, and wrapped that into a complete solution. So, you know, always when you develop an app, you want to leverage as much open source as possible so that you're kind of building on the shoulders of giants. We've definitely done that. Um, now, <clears throat> um, what we've done is we deliver this as a service. And not only is it as a service, but it's actually running cloud native in the cloud. So from the perspective of the developer, uh, they may only see their standard CI CD pipeline where it just simply pushes to the cloud runs the analysis and gives them the results, or it may even give those results in JIRA or Slack or whatever integration they may be using. Um, but one of the cool things about running in a cloud native environment ourselves, running all of this in cloud native, is that instead of running on-prem where you uh, sequentially look at each container, and it can take quite a long time, is we span out as many pods as necessary in order to evaluate everything in parallel. So that's that gives us a huge advantage in terms of performance. So it's really, you know, for the, for what it would typically take you to analyze one container, we can look at all of them. 
uh, when it comes to security, it's not just you know traditional model. It's it has changed. So can you also talk about what are the things that you look into, uh, and what 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 kind of you know uh, feature not exactly features, but what all do your customers get so that they it's more or less like you don't have to worry about compliance, you don't have to worry about updated packages, you don't have to worry about all these vulnerabilities. Can you talk about that? What we do is we run six different uh, analyzers. So one is the SCA. So that we're looking at the uh, open source packages that you have in there, the tools, libraries, whatever. Um, and we're telling you what sort of vulnerabilities you, you might have gotten with the, that Git, GitHub download that you mentioned. Um, we're also looking at the licenses because um, you know you want to make sure that by, by including certain tools, you don't automatically make your source code uh, open source, uh, things like that. So we do the license analyzer. Um, we also do a configuration analyzer. So we look at that container and we say, you know, uh, do you have uh, constraints on memory utilization, privilege, root access, scaling constraints, things like that in terms of the config. Um, because more and more people are running these in, um, not only in their own uh, Kubernetes, but also many times in Kubernetes as a service, uh, Cloud Run, Fargate, things like that. You really need to make sure that you're going to fit within their constraints or their config constraints. And then the next thing is we look at the uh, at the secrets. So are you including any passwords or AWS keys, um, any secret code, credentials, things like that? Um, then we look at, at your code and we look at the vulnerabilities there. And uh, so that's, you know, clearly we give you all of the information on uh, threat levels, things like that, where to go and resolve it within your code. And then finally, we look at the uh, malware as well. So we run a malware analyzer. So really our, our approach is, unless you have all six of these aspects, you really have a partial solution. So that's really what we focused on is a comprehensive solution. Are you noticing any trends or patterns of the kind of new threats? A lot of what we're doing is we're looking at uh, vulnerabilities in your native code and your, uh, and, and your downloaded code. Um, in terms of trends, I think, you know, people just, I think they're trying to get in, again, because of the sort of the east-west um, capabilities because in a Kubernetes cluster, it really opens that up. So I think more and more people are trying to, um, uh, to, to basically get into the cluster and then start exploring within the cluster. So, so making sure that you lock that down is, is really a critical uh, aspect of, uh, of, of securing your containers. What does your roadmap look like for 2020? So we're, we're just releasing this now. Um, this is uh, the beta version of, of the product. We're, we're, we're adding a couple more capabilities uh, to enhance more of kind of the teamwork aspect of it. And you'll also see that our configuration analyzer will, um, will more and more move towards evaluating containers against uh, deployment op options. So in other words, sort of, you can think of it as cloud run ready uh, Fargate ready. So we'll be looking at, at the configuration of your containers and mapping those to the configuration of the uh, deployment uh, environments. Mike, thank you so much for, for sitting down here and talking about the company and also a security landscape. And uh, I look forward to talk to you again because security is really going to become a very, very, you know, uh, it's not going to become, it is a kind of a topic of interest and it's, a lot of companies are taking it very, very seriously now. So thank you once again. Thank you, and I look forward to further conversations as well.